So this project's been so fun and I'm glad to have got this far. But one thing that's really blown me away is how many people have actually contacted me and actually watched these videos. So just a thank you to you. And I know my video skills are not the greatest, but I do hope to improve them. So watch this space, see where we get to. But yeah, as I said, there's been a few members getting in touch and they provide as much info and help. And I'm really thankful for that. It's one of the reasons I created the videos to capture this journey was to ensure that I finish it, but also allow other people to contribute. Um, it is quite a complex thing to try and make. So I really do appreciate it. So I have received some help and some videos um, and it's at the right time where I've got the same issues. So I figured it'd be really useful to share them with anyone else who's interested. And I figured I'd just talk over them to give a bit of context. One of the many mistakes I made was trying to make this piano was I only made a single note and it's quite a bassy note. And what I should have done is made sure that that method works for that, the high notes and it doesn't quite work. So the higher notes don't ring out for as long as we'd like them to. This could be down to how I fix the tines into the brass block or other factors such as the tine materials. And as I say, thankfully I got contacted with someone with the same issues and even more thankful that they've come up with a solution for this. I've not tested this, um, but I will try that in over the next week. One thing that's even more useful is I've captured it in videos. So let's Let's dive straight in. So this first visual just shows the type of wire that we're going to be using. Um, this is slightly thicker than what we have on a Fender Rhodes, but hey, we're making an electric piano. We're not trying to recreate a clone of a Fender Rhodes. I believe this wire has an unknown composition and state, but I think it'd be fair, it's some type of carbon steel. Okay, so the next part is we're going to try and pre-stress the wire. So in the previous videos, we looked at the Torrington time machines and this creates a work hardened steel. It does this by hammering the metal into a smaller profile. We're going to achieve something similar by twisting the wire. The Torrington machines create plastic residual stresses on the external surface of the wire. And we can create something similar if we twist the wire to the point where it plasticizes. And then when we release the twist, there's still some residual stresses in that wire. This acts to strengthen the wire. There's a whole segment of science dedicated to this material science, studying the grain structure of metals and how the mechanical, chemical or thermal processes affect this. I'm not going to go into detail on this, but essentially cover some real basics. And if you're interested in that, have research. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to come at something really useful to help a project or something you're doing yourself. But yeah, these grains can be considered as strong and the connection between the grains are typically what fail. When we work with metal, we stretch and we form these grains. So the next step is to heat the wire. This links back to that grain structure. Heating the metal hot enough allows it to recreate some of these grains. Once again, once the wire is hot enough, it'll be quenched in oil. And this oil controls the rate that the wire cools. And it's the rate of this cooling that creates the grain size. And the grain size has a huge effect on the mechanical properties. So this is a typical process to harden something. But one thing to bear in mind is when you harden something, it becomes very brittle and it becomes more likely to shatter. This is not ideal for something which is going to be hit with a hammer many times. So we want some of that hardness, but not all of it. So to help to kind of get a balance to that, we're going to take that metal and then we're going to reheat it again. And that's going to just tick off the edge of some of that hardness. Now, we don't know what temperature this is done. We don't know what metal it is. So there is some variables to play with. Um, for, for a DIYer, it's going to take a little bit of playing, but eh, it's, it's good fun, isn't it? What else are you going to do in the shed? Okay. 
And then we just let that metal naturally cool down. It'd be good to kind of get this to a discrete process. So the simplest way to check if this is going to resonate is to clamp that wire in a vise, give it a little plug, and we see we can get that to sustain. And that's really positive. It's going to do a lot better in, the, in a tune and fork configuration once we've got the tone bars in there and it's a full tone generator configuration. So this really does emphasize how much the mechanical properties of the metal are important for these types of electrical pianos. And I think there's, there's examples of people making uh, wallets of reeds out of hacksaw blades. And I think they're a good example of something that needs to be really hard and strong, but also not strong to the point where it's likely to shatter. And yeah, here's another view of just the, a tuner connected to a, a pickup. It's picking up the sound. It sounds like what I'd expect a single time to sound like. There's going to be a little bit of movement in the pitch because of how the pickup is held. But yeah, understanding what the mechanical properties and what processes are important to create a time gives us the ability to you know fully understand what we need to do when we make an electric piano so that was the first collection of videos that i got sent and i was really curious i, I want to know okay you've made this have you managed to make a full tone generator assembly so then I received this next selection of videos. So this shows how we're going to try and make that central block. Now in my design I used some brass square section and it involves a lot of drilling and tapping and it's a lot of work and here we've come up with the idea of using a long nut. That's already drilled, it's already tapped, it's already quite a hard material. So all we've got to do with this is to make sure that we can bolt it onto a tone bar and also that it's going to need a hole to attach the tine somehow. So these are silicon wire grommets. These are used for electrical cables. And if you shop around, you can find ones that will work. And I think that might be an interesting solution to how we separate the tone generators from the harp. I'm not saying to use this on a proper fender rod. Um, there's a lot of research and work gone into vendors that make these and have, you know, special screws that match these grommets. But as a DIY solution, it looks interesting. It looks like I'm going to have to get a set of these. Because these nuts are quite wide, what we want to do is put a flat edge on them so that we can drill a hole on one of the edges. And this gives us the, the narrowest profile we can come up with. If you look back at the video I made on the pickups, there was an issue where we, we crept too wide in the design and it wasn't going to work, so we had to redesign over again. So next we're just going to tap a little hole, um, start an indentation, so we drill something in the centre in a controlled hole. So it, it's nice to see how someone else will tackle the same project and what tools are used. And I think a, a machine clamp like this could be quite useful. It looks pretty cool. But yeah, at this point, we're just gonna drill a hole for the time. I'm not sure what drill size we've used, but because the wire is slightly thick, I'm gonna guess that this is probably a, a 1.5 drill bit with two mil wire. And that'll just allow it to be an interference fit and we can hammer them two together. Obviously, so the hole is smaller than the time, but if we grind on a small taper, then we can work it partly on, and then the next step is going to put it in a vise and give it some of that gentle persuasion. So yeah, we're just going to clamp the tine in the vise, and then we'll get our long nut, and then we can start hammering it on. And then the final part, so let's test this. Yeah, 
That rings out. It rings out as much as it was when it was clamped into the vise. I guess the only thing now is to, you know, make make 80 or 100 of these ready to make a full piano. So yeah, now this is a really interesting video. It shows the plan for the piano. It looks like some plywood. They've come up with a frame for the keys and started drilling holes. So this looks like a more typical piano key bed approach. And here is a key and a hammer. That looks like it does the job. It's the right bit of movement. So this project looks like it's well on the way to something successful. You notice like the key bump there with a bit of sponge or felt. So this final clip I've put is starting to think about how we're going to regulate the action for the piano. Combine this with shims and this adjustable screw allows the position of the key to be controlled. It's quite genius. And yeah, I think that's really exciting to see this. And I think I really want to see where this, uh, where this project goes. It's definitely inspired me. And it's so exciting to see someone else's take on the same project. And I won't lie to you, I want to complete my project now. And you know, thank you for the videos. I've also got another video on another project very similar to this that I'm going to share soon. And the ideas mean a lot, it does inspire. And it also helps other people. If anyone, I know some people have also thinking about trying a similar project. So if you do, if you do try something like this, do share it, it is really helpful. And the more people that try a similar project and share the results, the easier it gets for the next person to have a go. I'd be very surprised if this is the last we hear of this project. It looks like it's coming on pretty well and I will share any more videos I receive on it. Uh, thank you. It's so cool to see someone else's work. And uh, yeah, please, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, do subscribe. Have a good day.